Hello everyone, in this lecture today I'm going to talk to you about what is receptor, what is affinity and intrinsic activity and finally I'm going to talk about what is agonist, what is antagonist, what is partial agonist and what is inverse agonist. Okay, so let me first start with the receptor. Uh, what is receptor? Receptor is defined as a macromolecule or a binding site located on the surface or inside the cell that serves to recognize the signaling molecule or the drug and initiates the response to it. Okay, so what is a receptor? So basically, receptor is a is a macromolecule. Macromolecule. So th this can be located either on the surface or inside the cell or also on the transmembrane. So what does is what does the receptor do? The receptor it recognizes if this is a let's say that this is a, um, a drug molecule or the signaling molecule. So the receptor actually recognizes this. This is the receptor. This is the receptor. So this receptor recognizes this drug molecule. Okay. So this drug molecule. So um, and so then what does the receptor do? And the receptor actually recognizes this drug molecule or the signaling molecule and initiates the response to it okay so it's a macromolecule or a binding site uh, so then there are two important concepts first concept is called affinity and the second concept is called intrinsic activity or efficacy so what is affinity the the ability to bind with the receptor is known as affinity so basically the ability of the drug molecule or the signaling molecule to bind with the receptor okay so that ability is called affinity okay so ability of this drug molecule or the signaling molecule uh, to bind with the receptor is called affinity whereas what is intrinsic activity uh, the intrinsic activity or simply efficacy is the capacity to induce a conformational change in the receptor okay for example so let's say that this is the receptor before here we have the drug molecule and when this drug molecule binds with the receptor and there is a conformational change okay so so sorry so this is the conformational change here so basically this uh, the ability of ability the capacity of ability or the capacity of the drug molecule or the signaling molecule to induce a functional change in the receptor okay so that is a functional change okay it brings conformational change as by uh, then that leads to the functional chains okay so basically that is called intrinsic activity okay so functional chains in the receptor the capacity to induce a functional change in the receptor is called uh, intrinsic activity or efficacy so then uh, what is agonist okay so what is agonist okay let me again take an example of a receptor so this is receptor this is receptor so and let's say that this is the receptor um, for uh, and let's say that this is the signaling molecule signaling molecule is acetylcholine and this is muscarinic receptor M so uh, what is agonist so acetylcholine is present in our body so it is uh, present in our body uh, so this is a neurotransmitter when this acetylcholine binds with the mus muscarinic receptor when it binds to the muscarinic receptor it produces certain uh, types of biological response okay so then what is agonist then a uh, agonist or sometimes is called a full agonist it's a molecule or a chemical compound that can bind to the receptor okay so agonist can bind to the receptor and activate the receptor thus producing a biological response so ag agonist can bind to the receptor and activate the receptor producing a biological response so uh, so then what is the uh, what is the difference between the uh, this uh, naturally occurring acetylcholine molecule or the neurotransmitter and the agonist the agonist is an agent which activates the receptor to produce an effect similar to that of the physiological signal molecule okay so acetylcholine let's the, let okay drug a okay so here this is drug a this is acetylcholine so when acetylcholine binds to this muscarinic receptor it produces certain types of biological response so what is agonist an agonist is an agent which activates the receptor so this agonist will bind to the receptor it will activate the receptor and it will produce a an effect similar to that of the physiological signal molecule let's say that drug a is an agonist so when drug a will be agonist so the drug the drug a will be agonist when it binds to this muscarinic receptor and produces a, a biological response similar to the acetylcholine 
because this acetylcholine is a physiological signal molecule and this drug A is an agonist of acetylcholine. Okay, so the, because uh, the, not acetylcholine, sorry, agonist of this receptor, but it is producing the biological response similar to acetylcholine. Okay, and agonist is an agent which activates a receptor to produce an effect similar to that of the physiological signal molecule. Okay, and the next point is that agonists they have both affinity and maximum intrinsic activity okay so they will have the capacity to bind to the receptor and maximum intrinsic activity that means that they will produce functional chains intrinsic activity is one and it has affinity so this is examples of agonists include adrenaline histamine morphine etc okay so now I described about what is agonist now let me uh, talk about what is partial agonist Partial agonist is a molecule or a chemical compound that can bind to the receptor, okay? Like the agonist, this uh, partial agonist can also bind to the receptor, but it weakly activates the recept receptor, thus producing a sub-maximal biological response. In case of agonist, the biological response was maximum, but in case of partial agonist, the biological response is sub-maximal. That means the less than maximum, okay? It's a w it, it weakly activates the receptor. So basically, uh, if we talk in terms of affinity and intrinsic activity, so uh, this uh, partial agonist, it has the property of affinity, but has less intrinsic activity or efficacy than a full agonist. Okay, so um, this means that the partial, a partial agonist will have intrinsic activity greater than zero. Partial agonist will have intrinsic activity greater than zero, but less than one. Example of partial agonist is buprenorphine, a, it's it's a partial agonist at the mu receptor okay so then in another words an an agonist that is not capable to produce a maximal response is known as partial agonist so partial agonist is the agonist uh, that is not capable to produce maximal response or or it simply produces partial response that kind of that is called uh, the uh, partial agonist so then next concept is antagonist. So what is antagonist? Antagonist, it is an agent which prevents the action of an agonist on a receptor or the subsequent response, but does not have any effect of its own. So this agent prevents the action of action of an agonist on a receptor, okay? So basically, if let's say that this uh, A is an antagonist, so this antagonist, it will bind here and it will prevent, let's say that B is the ag agonist, so basically A will prevent the action of uh, action, A will, pre A will prevent the action of B on this particular receptor. Therefore, uh, A is an antagonist. Antagonist prevents the action, action of an agonist on a receptor or the subsequent response, but does not have any effect of its own. So for example, atropine, it blocks the action of acetylcholine in a uh, muscarinic acetylcholine receptor. Therefore, atropine is an antagonist, okay? Also, antagonists, they show zero intrinsic activity. So zero intrinsic activity is zero, okay? So they have affinity, like I said, they have affinity. So antagonists, they have affinity, but they have no intrinsic activity. Intrinsic activity will be equal to zero. And finally, inverse agonist. What is inverse agonist? Inverse agonist is a molecule or a chemical compound that can bind to the same receptor site as agonist, but produces a biological response opposite to that of the agonist. Okay, so why it's inverse? Inverse here referring to opposite. Okay, so opposite of agonist. So the biological response produced by inverse agonist is opposite of the full agonist okay so that means the efficacy is negative okay so an inverse agonist is a is a molecule or a chemical compound that can bind to the receptor but rather than producing an activation it will lead to a deactivations that means that decrease in the baseline activity of the receptor okay so like the agonist inverse agonist binds to the receptor but it produces a biological response uh, opposite to that of the agonist, okay? So then, uh, for example, flumazenil, it produces an uh, exogenic effect at the GABA, gamma-aminobutyric acid receptor. Here, flumazenil, 
is an inverse agonist. Flumazanil is an inverse agonist. So guys, finally now, I'm going to mm, describe the differences between full agonist, partial agonist, antagonist, and inverse agonist using this graph. Here, this is the receptor response on the y-axis. Here, we have drug concentration on the x-axis, okay? So this green line here indicates basal activity. So as you can see here that the full agonists, they have the intrinsic activity maximum, 100%, okay? So that's why intrinsic activity is maximum uh, for full agonists. Whereas for partial agonists, uh, this intrinsic activity is less, you see it's not maximum, but it's, it's less, it's above basal activity, but less than one, okay? So but less than one, less than 100%, but above the basal activity. Then the next thing is that antagonist, antagonist, it has, you know, zero intrinsic activity or simply basal activity. Yeah, no activity as such because this is the baseline. We are considering this uh, green as the baseline. So antagonists have no intrinsic activity. But if you look at inverse agonists, you can see that the inverse agonist, the basal activity is less. You know, the, the, this basal activity is less than the uh, the the activity, the biological response. The activity is uh, the, the biological response is less than the basal activity for. Uh, inverse agonist okay so less than basal activity uh, for antagonist just the basal activity for partial antagonist more than basal activity but less than uh, f uh, um, less than complete response for full agonist we have the maximum response i hope guys this video was helpful in understanding the differences between uh, full agonist partial agonist antagonist and inverse agonist thank you very much for your kind attention